Hi, welcome to Ions Health Talk with Dr. Akram. I am Akram. In this program, we'll be talking about all kinds of different health issues with different experts in the field. Today, we will be talking about vaccination. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your time with us. The practice of immunization dates back hundreds of years. Buddhist monks drank snake venom to confer immunity to, to snake bite, and variolation was practiced in 17th century China, where dry powdered smallpox caps being puffed up one's nose to cause milder form of smallpox and hence to acquire immunity. African born slave Onesimus advised his master Cotton Mayfair about variolation what they did in Africa, showing his scars of inoculation, and that led Zabdiel Boyston, an American physician, to administer first variolation in the US in 1721. Edward Jenner is considered the founder of vaccinology in the West. In 1796, Jenner inoculated 13-year-old James Phipps with vaccinia virus or cowpox and demonstrated immunity to smallpox. In 1798, the first smallpox vaccine was developed. Over the 18th and 19th century, systematic implementation of mass smallpox immunization culminated its global decline. Smallpox, a disease which killed 300 million people in the 20th century alone, been declared eradicated in 1980, thanks to vaccination. Louis Pasteur Experiments spearheaded the development of live attenuated cholera vaccine and inactivated anthrax vaccine in humans. Between 1890 and 1950, bacterial vaccine development proliferated, including the Bacille Calmet Gorin, the famous BCG vaccination, which is still in use today. But our greatest challenge with microbes not yet to be confirmed. Since late 2019, we've been faced with another stronger pathogen, COVID-19. COVID-19 proved to be more challenging than any other in the past. The vaccine makers all around the world raced to find a solution while the virus kept mutating or changing its profile to decoy the scientists. In August, Vladimir Putin announced about Sputnik V, named after their famous space program, a promising vaccine currently used in Russia. China brought its own vaccine to save its citizens. There are 59 vaccines in the research level in China, but 28 of them are in phase two and three human trials. In the West, Pfizer, Moderna, and Oxford are about to release their first lot for public use, and a lot more on the research level. But apart from being received multiple jabs in the childhood, what do we know about vaccines? Do we know what it is, how it works, its pros and cons, and how does it save the humanity from the greatest microbial terror of the world? Let's welcome our special guest on the show, Dr. Mohammed Ramali, to learn all about vaccines. Ramali, welcome to the show again. Thank you, Akram, again. Very happy to be back. It's nice to see you again. I think we had a great program, isn't it? It was on the respiratory failure. Yes. Because you've been treating lots of COVID patients. That's correct. Yes. But again, you are here to talk something kind of related to COVID because we're going to talk about COVID vaccine in the second half of the program. Yes. But first half, we're going to explain what is vaccine. People need to know, understand. Okay. In case if anyone hasn't watched our program before, can you explain about you? Who are you? Okay, so I'm, one, I'm a, a specialist in intensive care and anesthesia. So although you might be wondering why I'm interested in vaccines. So for any disease, prevention is the best strategy. And uh, I always think of the analog. Uh, consider a football game. You don't want your goalkeeper to be the line of defense all the time. So being intensive care physicians, the, the journey of a patient, the last uh, destination is intensive care. We try to make them better all the time, but unfortunately, some may don't make it. 
So I had interest in vaccination for a long time, and uh, I am leading the research, the recovery trial, and remap in our hospital. And there's tremendous amount of work done behind the scenes by the research people. They work seven days a week, and can I take this opportunity to give a shout out to my research of team? Of course, yeah, of course, they've you could even fantastic. tell their names. Uh, no, I think there's a long list. <laughs> so uh, they've been very helpful because of the research we've contributed. We know how to treat the current pandemic better. And personally, I've seen less people coming to ITU this time. So whatever the product of research last time is working. And one more thing, Akram, you always get the timing right. Now, there was a big announcement about this vaccine coming out, and you have a vaccine program. And I don't think you know the other significance of today. Today is supposed to be World Pneumonia Day. World Pneumonia Day, that's yes. amazing. And 2009, they started having this, and uh, here we go. Thank you very much. Well, as it's rightly time, I think I haven't, I haven't, of course, planned it. It's just a random selection, and it's turned out to be good. Ramali, it's amazing. That's good. I think anyway, today we you are here, you are here not to invite people to ITU, and you're going to keep them away. You give vaccine and keep them away. Exactly. That's amazing. Okay, okay. Um, let's talk a little bit. Oh, before that, anyway, guys, this is a live program, so. Uh, we usually take calls, but today we have a really busy schedule. We will not take calls during the program, but if anyone wants to call us, you're welcome to call after we finish the program, and we will stay in the studio for uh, a little more time, and we'll take any of your calls and we can answer. But in case, if you miss that, you could always follow our uh, Health Talk YouTube channel, or you could write to our health talk intv.co.uk for uh, more information, or if you want to clarify anything. But anyway, keep enjoy watching our program. Thank you very much, uh, Ramali. Okay, let's talk. Let's see. Uh, generally, uh, even medical people uh, don't understand much about vaccines because we we learn in the, in the in the in the medical school, and after that, if you're not in that section, you kind of forget about it. This. Can you explain in simple term what is this vaccine about? Absolutely, Akram. So when people start to go into these minor specialities or, or, or super specialties, you are right. Last time we would have heard or studied must have been uh, in medical school. So basically, a uh, vaccine is a way of teaching our body to fight against an infection. So two ways it's, I mean, one, we get an illness and body will fight against that illness. But the disadvantage is the patient gets sick during that procedure. So that's not the best. So if you can give something or artificially to teach the body's immune system, what I mean by immune system is we have T cells and B cells, they produce antibodies and fight against any infections. So they the, are kind of like soldiers, aren't they? That's exactly right. So, yeah. and even they, they've got memory as well. So what the vaccine will teach initially to identify that particular infection or the bug. So the body is ready for the second time when the real infection comes they will identify those bugs in double quick time and the response will be even far better. So that's why the, uh, the, the vaccine uh, is important to prevent. Uh, good old days, you know, poor mothers didn't, didn't they were anxious whether they, their children will survive to uh, adults and, or, or teenagers so bad. And so we have to be very grateful to the historians or, or, or the father, father of vaccine, that's how it started. And now most of these diseases the current generation even don't know. Don't know about it. That's yeah. True. So that's basically the summary of how vaccine works. That, that's a very good example. It, it, it's something like you have a military unit and you have the soldiers, isn't it? These soldiers are these... Uh, the Antibodies. Antibodies, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's what. Yeah. And the vaccine is something like a, a decoy uh, enemy. You exactly. bring in. Yes. And uh, so these soldiers get trained for their color, their type, and their shape. Absolutely, yeah. Because you bring, uh, you could bring some 
normal soldiers and you train these guys yeah. to fight against yeah. them, uh, you could bring their pictures or you could bring a part of them, a helmet or a yeah. t-shirt or something yeah. like that, and the body get used to yeah. it. That's simply it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's not much science behind it. But there's so much research going on. You had exactly. to, the safety is very important. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm yeah. sure we'll be talking about it in more detail. Later. Okay, okay, let's go to the history now. Mm. Right. Smallpox killed 300 million people in 20th century alone. In 1798, as you said, Edward Jenner found the first vaccine. And um, let's talk a little bit about smallpox, smallpox vaccine. It's fascinating, the history is because the way it was identified, uh, I think a milkmaid who, who, who was distributing milk and got uh, accidentally inoculated by cowpox and then uh, she didn't get the disease. So then the scientists at that time uh, thought, okay, in that case, uh, the, the body is able to identify it. So they started inoculating a smallpox. I think it was a, a teenager or a, or, or a young boy. James Fitt, he was That's 13 the name. year old. Yes. He was um, Edward Jenner's uh, gardener's son. Yes. yes, so those days, again, because the, the researchers were sometimes injecting onto themselves because the, the research was at a such a, such a uh, primitive stage. Exactly. And, and, and all the family members. So finally, we are here. But you, you are true here. You know, the American uh, physician, Zabdiel Boyston, he injected his son as well from first yeah. inoculation. Yeah. So, so that's fascinating the history. It was a bit cruel. Uh, it was a bit uh, difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There was there was a couple of ways. I think yeah. the Chinese they yeah. they they used to uh, take these caps from uh, from the smallpox healers and they used to dry it, make a powder, and they had this long blowpipe. Exactly. So they used to uh, they used to puff it through someone's nose. Yeah. And um, then I was reading about this uh, in the Africa, especially in Sudan, there were some practices uh, were there. It was uh, two of them. Um, and what they did is um, the mother would go to the child, uh, like another family, the child had a smallpox, and they would bid some money mm. to get those uh, infected scabs. So they will put a cloth around that the other child's arm mm -hmm. and uh, and they will barter and once uh, the smallpox you know the the pustules burst and they will bring it and they will put it on her kids so they will get a small uh, easy form of um, yeah. vaccination or variolation as they, they call it yeah, variolation. and um, they used to uh, the other practice was uh, what they started in america was the they used to make three scars on the on the deltoid like here in this area and they used to get, uh, get pustules from someone and get this uh, little bit of pus and put it over there and close it. Exactly. And look where we and are. And that's what uh, uh, Edward Jenner tried it. Yeah, yeah. And here we go. Now we have a cleaner form and yes. uh, we don't take uh, full uh, uh, this antivirus or any bacteria, but we have attenuated killed yes. form. Anyway, we'll go yeah. a bit more detail into next bit. Yeah. What type of vaccines available? Yeah. Right? So. From those era, and we have come a long way. So basically, there are four types of vaccines available. So when I say vaccine, the, the one which is inactivated. So you get the virus or the or the bacteria, you inactivate it, you completely kill it, and give it to the patient. So when I say give it to the patient, it's only very minute amount the patient gets it. If you see now on our body, and over here. There'll be lots of bacteria, millions, which we can't see. If you compare with that, it's only a very tiny amount, and that particular amount can be given to about 50,000 people. So that is the inactivated vaccine. Inactivated yeah, vaccine. So there is no live vaccine or live organism there, no live bug there. And then the other category is the, you call it attenuated, live attenuated vaccine. So where the, the virulence or the, or the severity of the disease has been reduced by other methods, like you can radiate, you can put adjuvants. So you reduce it, so it doesn't have the harmful effect, but that is enough for the body to identify it as a, 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 an enemy and to start acting on it. So that 
if you compare those two, because this is a live attenuated, the response is better. So it gives longer immunity. Immunity, that's right. Yeah, it? so it, it's powerful and as opposed to the inactivated Inactivated. One. Yeah, because live attenuated, it's, it's still, it looks normal, yes. isn't it? Yes. It's, it's, it's got all components of that uh, that enemy. Yes, that's correct. So yes. that's why, isn't it? The response anyway, we, is better. We, we will, let's play a, a video. This is about a, a person who has uh, contracted polio um, and he's still been in this iron lung. So because since we are talking about this is our uh, about vaccine and what he missed uh, because the vaccine was developed in 1952 and uh, I think about six months before he has uh, contracted polio. I know I, I've seen yeah, let's that. Let's play let's play the video yeah. and let's show them and he's still living. That's interesting. And thank you for Gizmo Door uh, from uh, YouTube. We have taken their video from them. Period. Well, a lot of humanity knows nothing about polio. People know what it is. Paul Alexander is a polio survivor who spends nearly all day, every day, inside his iron lung at home in Dallas, Texas. The disease paralyzed Paul from the neck down, so the machine helps him breathe by using negative pressure to force his body to take in air. He was only six years old when he caught polio in 1952, one of the worst outbreak years in U.S. history. When I first drank the polio, uh, I was just kid like a my else, but it came to feel a little bit uh, ill. My mom saw my face and then she put me immediately to bed. Over the next five days, I lost everything. Couldn't move, couldn't walk. And finally, the last day, I couldn't breathe. My diaphragm was gone, destroyed. Like, finally, my muscles were gone, destroyed. Which left me in the iron world for the rest of my life. Parents were so afraid of the mysterious, deadly disease that they kept their children from playing with others. Pools, theaters, camps, even schools shut down. Everybody was petrified with the concept of polio. It, it kind of dominated the summer. And parents were freaked out if the kid even got the sniffles. But just a few months after Paul contracted the disease, Jonas Salk discovered a vaccine for polio. Today, Paul is one of the last living polio survivors who has such a bad case of paralysis that he still relies on a relic of that dark time. He can leave the device only for a few hours at a time with tremendous difficulty. Paul's story is one of the harsh story of not having vaccine. Unfortunately, when he was uh, that age, six years old, uh, the vaccine came after six months uh, since he contracted the polio, and he missed it. He still lives in the iron lung. This is this must be the. This must be the only iron lung uh, which is functioning at the moment. And you can check this we, uh, the whole video of Gizmodo in the YouTube channel the um, uh, if, if you're interested. In. Ramali, let, let's talk a little bit about polio. Yeah, so it's been, I, I think it was in 1950s, it was a dreadful thing. So because the effect it caused, because the paralysis, it can occur anywhere. And when it starts hitting the lung, you just can't breathe. So that's exactly why this, this gentleman is, is, is affected now. So polio itself, people think it goes straight into the nervous system. No, actually it is transmitted from, we call it fecal oral route. So it goes into your gut, so into your intestine, and then gets into the bloodstream and gets into the, the, the nervous system and which causes paralysis. And that's important because the types of vaccines when we talk about it, there is a, there is a oral 
oral, uh, oral polio, polio vaccine, vaccine yeah, that's and right. an injectable one. Yeah. So the injectable one was invented by Jonah Sack, and that's the oral one with Albert Sabin was. That's history. Both yes. from America. Yes. So injectable one is the inactivated one. It is more effective, but in countries only when it is when it is controlled. Whereas the oral polio vaccine is a live attenuated one. So in countries, especially the third world countries, and also where there are lots of conflicts, the children are still suffering from polio. polio. Like I think there are three countries named, I think Afghanistan, Pakistan, and one of the African countries. African still, countries yeah. still it is there. But they make use of that vaccine to pass the immunity to others as well. That's because the, or it's an oral vaccine. It will pass that uh, uh, immunity to others. others so that's why it's important to use that in, in places where it is less well controlled. Let's quickly talk about MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. This is, these are all childhood vaccines. Yes. So if you see the vaccine schedule here, you have what is, uh, there is a good schedule in this country, and all these vaccines are included. So MMR is uh, three, three components there, measles, mumps, and rubella. And that can cause devastating effect if it's not uh, treated or prevented early. Especially it can cause meningitis, it can cause uh, otitis media, it can cause pneumonia. So it's, it's very important in childhood to, to combat this and, and, and stop this happening. So hence MMR vaccine uh, is, but still, you see cases coming uh, into light, uh, measles, mumps, and rubella. But it prevents a lot of children, a exactly. lot of children mm. not getting this illness, yes. isn't it? Yes. It, it, that's the important yes. thing. Yes. Anyway, um, we are, um, l let's talk, there's a little bit of controversy. Let's, yes. let's touch upon it yes. and we'll go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we have to touch upon it because it's very important to get the trust of parents uh, and the public to, to uh, implement these programs. And if you don't have about 80 to 90 percent efficiency, it's difficult. So there was, unfortunately, in the 1990s, there was a paper published in one of the reputed journals to say that MMR vaccine may be, may be associated with autistic spectrum disorder and some, some colitis. So, when they hear these sort of thing, mothers, uh, as parents, we, we, we get worried. And after that, for a few years, there was very low uptake of these vaccines. And suddenly, you started seeing these cases going up. But later on, it was retracted, and it was found not to be true. So that was an unfortunate uh, period of time where the public, I don't know, I how to call it whether misled but it 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 was retracted and 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 that is now i can't say history we still talk about it we're but it, it's we're not we still we still talk about it. so don't forget uh, these vaccines are for you you have to take it and if the health uh, officials say about it anyway uh, today we are talking about vaccines it's an important program so first off we're going to talk about these basic vaccines what we use for uh, uh, for children but in the second half we're going to talk more about uh, covid-19 vaccine this is a hot topic um, but uh, to and uh, what kind of vaccines came first and the childhood vaccine there's a little bit left on that and uh, then the second half we have planned to talk more about covid vaccine that's th what you guys waiting to hear uh, anxiously we know that but anyway um, this is a live program but today we are not going to take any calls because this is a, a really busy program you could of course call us after we finish the program we will be in the studio we will be happy to answer all your calls and uh, if you have uh, missed that you could always uh, we will once we upload the YouTube video health talk doc at doctor Health Talk with Dr. Akram, you could always write down underneath and we'll answer all your questions. Okay, Ramali, let's go, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about this one. Pertosis or whooping cough. In 2008, 16 million people got, in, uh, children got infected. 195,000 children died from pertosis. Yeah, so most of these viral diseases affect the children. As I told before, in, in the past, Parents are dreading whether their children will reach teenage years. So thanks to these vac vaccines, actually, it's combined as, uh, as one vaccine, the three 
uh, diphtheria, DTP, yeah. pertussis, and uh, tetanus. Tetanus. So, so it can be given as one vaccine. So after that, that program actually that is incorporated into vaccine schedule in all the countries, all and we've countries. seen the cases going down. And these cases you hear are in places where there is no proper vaccination program Progress. or that it's, it's unable to reach those areas because of conflict and, and socioeconomic status. So it's sad, but for that's why WHO has taken uh, uh, so many efforts uh, because the funding and, and the development, developing countries and the, and the developed countries contribute to that funding and the WHO aim is to get to those areas and start, start yeah. vaccinating them. It's an unfortunate uh, thing. That's an unfortunate thing. It doesn't reach there. In, yes. in, especially in the West as well, yes. there is certain parents, they don't like to give vaccines to their children. Isn't it? Yeah. And they also get affected with these things. And I have here heard from one of my colleagues who work in a hospital, one of the, in the UK, a child was uh, admitted with um, pertussis. Yes, and time your to parents time. did not give vaccines. Yes. Time to time we see that. You see that. And I've seen tetanus here one. Yeah. And so, but it's it's much less than it was before. Exactly. Just uh, educating them yeah. and making sure that the vaccines reach. Yeah. So in case, if, you, if you're not towards vaccination, please read more. There are lots of stuff in the internet and uh, NHS websites and uh, lots of other websites. Please read more. And if you have any further questions, you can always uh, ask us. Okay, let's talk quickly a little bit about rabies, which is, which is rare in this country, but especially in, uh, in Africa, in Asia, it, which is still there, isn't it? So rabies is uh, caused by virus and it is transmitted by uh, most commonly dogs but other animals as well so when a rabid dog or a, a, a dog which has got rabies bites a human being there is a chance or, or the patient or the person will get rabies the, the thing with rabies is there is no cure it's only prevention once you get rabies you uh, you you succumb and there is no no treatment for that that's why it's important luckily during the incubation period there are vaccines available and Earlier it used to be 21 or 18 vaccine into your belly, but now fortunately that's been uh, uh, developed into three, sometimes five or seven doses. So it's changed because now you rarely see uh, people dying of rabies, but still we hear in certain countries it's very sad to to, to because uh, of 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 two things. One is. The, the dogs or, or the animals has to be immunized. That's one way of doing it. Uh, and and, and patients don't get the vaccination and they ignore sometimes. Ignore, yeah. yeah. So, but even if the uh, if, if they had been bitten by a dog or bats as well, the other one, yes. um, immediately, it's, it's advisable to take the vaccine immediately. Exactly. But even if you miss it, but uh, try to take it uh, within short time, yes. before the symptoms develop. Yes, okay. because if, if it depends on how severe, so yeah. uh, uh, you have to go to hospital, and they will assess whether if it's severe, they will give what is known as antibody as well, human antibody or sometimes horse, which is not available. Uh, if human antibodies are not available, they will have to get the horse antibodies or serum, serum. and then follow on with the with the uh, preventative vaccination. Okay, let's watch a, a video. This is uh, um, kindly provided by AstraZeneca. This is all about how they make the uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Um, before we explain more about it, and let's watch this video. Thanks, uh, AstraZeneca, for this uh, important video. This is really useful for us. Approaches to vaccine development to prime the body's immune response to COVID-19 include using weakened viruses or viral proteins or using specific viral genetic code, either DNA or RNA directly, or creating viral vectors with specific viral genetic code. COVID-19 adenoviral vector vaccine is an adenovirus vector based on a common cold that has been modified and inserted with the genetic material for the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. 
reproduction starts with assembly of its genetic code. The adenovirus vector is engineered from adenovirus DNA by removing essential genes to stop it being able to replicate so it can only act as a carrier and not cause disease. Adding the coronavirus spike protein DNA creates the full genetic sequence for the adenoviral vector vaccine. The genetic code is introduced into a producer cell, where it is transcribed and translated to form the COVID-19 adenoviral vector vaccine. The human cell line is engineered to contain the missing adenovirus genes, so that when the vector vaccine is introduced, it can infect the cells and use the cell machinery and missing viral genes to be able to replicate, producing identical copies. Vaccine molecules are also replicated with the division of the cells and the process continues until the right concentration is reached. The addition of a chemical lyses the cells, bursting them open, and the vector vaccine is harvested, ready to be further tested, filtered and purified before being filled into vials. That's a great video uh, kind of provided by AstraZeneca. That kind of explain what we're going to talk about, isn't it? Lamely, what, what, what are these flu vaccines, how they make it? Okay, so flu is our, our, our every, every winter, we, we, we are asked to vaccinate ourselves against this uh, uh, flu. Flu is basically a virus, it's called influenza. So influenza A, B are the common, common uh, players here. So every year, we, we, they, they actually predict what sort of strains are going to be. So this time, we have a vaccine called quadrivalent uh, vaccine where it is protective against two subtypes of influenza A and two subtypes of influenza B. So they do all the hard work. We have to take the vaccine because, because of the COVID, it's been slightly sidelined. Otherwise, every year we have a number of deaths occurring because of uh, flu. flu. So the same sort of vulnerable people get it like the COVID, so elderly, with a lot of COVID uh, comorbidities. Comorbid. The biggest difference is the children. Children. So that's why in the vaccination schedule, two to 10 years, and people over 65, I think people now over 50, are eligible to get the vaccine. And of, of course, the health workers, because, uh, because of this flu, the productivity or the effect to the economy also has an impact. So if people are sick, so, so when there is a way to prevent these things, so most of the time it's uh, effective and uh, at least 60, 70 percent of the time it is. So I personally, I take it every year and I, I feel I don't get it as much as I used to get it in the past. That, that's a good thing you said who, who, who's supposed to take it. But if you're fit and healthy, uh, do you still have to take a flu vaccine or is it, it your choice? It's, it's our choice, but it is better because if it's, it's sometimes dreadful getting that flu and then you have lots of body ache, especially your job, your work, and you might otherwise give it to your family. Family. So it's, it's contagious. So that's why it's important. And also but some people mothers. don't get flu at all, isn't it? Yes. For them, is it really important to take flu vaccine? or is Again, it it's a personal choice. It's a personal yes. choice. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's, that's very good. Uh, OK. Um, uh, we talk about why we should take because it, it, it can spread to the families. Yes. yes. Contra any controversies about flu vaccine? Are they what's going on around? Uh, not as controversies because, as I said, it's, it's done in a massive scale. So important groups are pregnant mothers. Should pregnant it. mothers. Yeah, and children. And we talk about the children. People with comorbidities, asthmatics, diabetes. Not controversies. I would say it's lack of... Uh, understanding or knowledge, knowledge because people with egg allergies they have to be careful because there is an egg based uh, uh, protein, there, protein there so you have to be careful and 
But we are lucky in this country. There is alternative available which doesn't have egg. So the hospital can order it for you if you want, or the GP practice. So I think everyone should take it. That's my after message. the vaccine, you can also get a small flu-like symptoms. So you, there is no live virus. That's important thing. It's an inactivated it's an virus. Inactivated. Yeah. That's so a really good point you yeah. said. So there is no live virus. So yeah. you won't get flu from the vaccine. Right. That you have to understand. What you get is the most common side effect is pain in the, in the, in the side, at the site of side injection. Side of injection. One to three days. I had it just for one day. That's it. I, I went to work same day. No, no issues. Headache sometimes can get. Muscle pain. Uh, and that's basically it. So myalgia, that is the worst thing where you have like weakness and, and malaise, you call it, and body ache. But it will never give you a flu as such because that's to prevent the flu. So that's probably a body is working hard, isn't it? That's yes. why you get these symptoms, isn't it? Exactly. Because the body is concentrating yeah. on something yeah. else to produce yeah. this uh, yeah. ammunition. So that, there's against. no live vaccine there, so that's the important <laughs> yeah. thing. Okay, okay. The most important things, we're coming there now. Okay, yes. let's talk about uh, what Putin saying about uh, Sputnik V after this famous... Uh, um, yeah. The was that the, the program and the China is talking about yes. it in the West. Yeah, so I, I want to, I was looking forward to this, Atom, honestly, to talk about the COVID vaccine because don't know whether you remember when, when we were at the height of pandemic or even before it was uh, affecting China and other parts of the world, people were talking about exit strategy and they were saying only a vaccine can, can help us get out of get this. Get out of it. And how, how many, not even a year, and we are here. So that's a big achievement. achievement. Because that when it's hitting um, China, as far early as January, the Chinese authorities actually shared with the rest of the world the genetic code of the virus. That's amazing. That was the reason why others could work on it. And work on it. you know, we talked about the traditional types of vaccines. So these are the novel. So these Vaccines are produced by working along in the genetic material of the virus. Yeah. So uh, there are about nearly 200, 198 to be precise, vaccines are being worked. The 198 they, vaccines are being researched? Yes. But exactly. there are only a dozen of major players in the phase three trial. Phase if three I want trial. to just quickly explain what are these, people talk about now, Suddenly, it's in public media, the phases, trials. So when a vaccine is developed, I'm talking pre-COVID, takes about six, seven, eight years from the time they start doing it in cell outside the body, human body, to be made or to finish the phase three trial. So first pre-trial, pre before the humans, they, they experimented on animals or some cells. Cells or animals, when yeah. They are successful, they go into what is known as phase one trial. Phase one trial. Phase one trial is only a handful of human beings yeah. are tested. And they once that is successful, they look for side effects. Uh, they don't uh, have placebo at that time. Then they go into phase two trial where hundreds of people. But to make it quicker, sometimes you can combine phase one and phase two. Phase two. Phase three is thousands of human volunteers undergoing these tests. So if you threw out numbers, now the one which Pfizer has made an announcement that it will be available if it passes the last hurdle, the regulatory approval, about 43,000 human volunteers have been tested. 43,000 But people. not everyone got the COVID vaccine because you have to give placebo as well. Exactly. So, that's so they get the water. dummy vaccine, isn't it? That's yes. salt water. Salt water. Yeah, and the vaccine. Yeah. They don't know what they are getting. The, the people who receive, they don't know. But people who give also it's, don't no, know. No, they don't know. So They this, come in the same kind of vials. Exactly. Everything exactly. is same. But the results are the people who got, I don't know the microanalysis of that. But they have probably a lot number or something they can trace who got what. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah. They had COVID, the people who had the the placebo, whereas people who had the proper vaccine did not develop. That was the 
uh, ground baking. And they, they said it's 99% effective or something. 90% effective. 90% effective. That's effective. because, again, so far, it's very difficult to get that efficiency. Yeah. So the one which has been advertised now, I'm not advertised, I made a big announcement to say that by early as mid-December, we might have a vaccine which is produced by Pfizer, which is an American vaccine, which is actually... Uh, they do, they're working with a German company as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. It's actually a, a code, a part of a gene, or mRNA, yeah. we call it, from the virus, is taken out and introduced into the body. But the virus, the mRNA alone can't get into the body. We get into a cell, you have to have some uh, lipid material or fatty material. Yeah. So it's incorporated into a lipid material and sent into our body. The important thing is it will produce something like spike protein of the virus. So when the immune system sees this spike protein, it thinks it is the COVID protein, protein. and start making antibodies. So it's it, not actually it exactly look like COVID protein. Isn't yes, it? so that's spike right. protein. Yeah. So that's a spike which is what we yeah, call it exactly. coronavirus. Corona, yeah. So then the body will start producing antibodies. So then the memory will be there. When the patient actually is exposed to the COVID, that will recognize it as the, the, the same uh, virus and produce in mass numbers. So it's not, it's not a silver bullet yet because the duration. So we still don't know how long it will be protective for. So it might have to be taken as flu vaccine every year. And also the age group. Age group, yeah. So I don't know how many of these uh, volunteers have been over 65. So those things will be will be released, I think, later on. But where we were about uh, about in January or December, and now it's a massive achievement. And this is the only way I think we can come out of this. That is a good news, isn't? It? And even I think it was in uh, is it in August Vladimir Putin advised about the Sputnik V. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That was the first vaccine yeah. to be announced. Yeah. Um, and they yeah. started using it in Russia, and he said his daughter has had it as well. Yeah. So that's another method. It's been mRNA is a very novel method, right? Whereas the, the one which is uh, the AstraZeneca is making and, and the Russian vaccine, uh, vector adenovirus vector based. Vector is a, a vehicle to take that. So this uh, virus. So that's the Russian. Yeah, one, and the, the, and the adenovirus Oxford one. vector, yeah. yeah. So they will, they will take a genetic material, you call it genetic modification, and put it into uh, uh, another virus like, like like the AstraZeneca one is a, a very innocent chimpanzee virus. That's right, a chimpanzee yeah. virus. So that is incorporated into it and it's uh, injected into the body. And once it's in the body, it will recognize it as a spike protein spike and protein. they'll start. So it's all these novel methods which which amazing we never thought will be will be. And the first time mRNA has been used at this far as previously it's been used, but didn't make it this far, well, didn't succeed. Didn't succeed. So this is the first time. The technology has improved Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. And they spend a huge amount of money on these vaccines. Exactly. And the China has produced a, a lot of vaccines. I have heard in China now it's mandatory if they're going to travel abroad, they should have a vaccine. Yes. And it is the, 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 the prominent vaccine that is, I think, Sinovac. I think it is the good old traditional way which is the uh, inactivated, inactivated complete vaccine. virus. Yeah. So that's their way of doing that. One of the, I think one of the France companies also doing it, the, the, the whole virus has been inactivated. So they've taken the traditional route or the traditional way of tackling this. Okay, let's summarize the different kinds of uh, corona uh, or COVID-19 vaccines there, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, what you said, the, the mRNA, so yeah. the messenger so, RNA vaccine, yeah. which is the AstraZeneca one. Yes, uh, the, the Pfizer one. Pfizer one. one. The AstraZeneca one is the genetic modification of where they, they use a vector to get it. Vector. Yeah, yeah. so it's the... Uh, could be a cold virus, which is an innocent one. So innocent yeah, virus, and they put yeah. this genetic That's called genetic modification, modification of the virus. Of the virus. But they will recognize when they start producing the spike yeah. protein as 
as as a virus. Yeah. And the inact than the good old uh, traditional way of doing it, inactive or inactivated virus. So those are the uh, main players uh, in in the in the world. So hopefully by December they are already preparing in this country how to vaccine, whom to vaccinate, and priority. Because in case we were asked to, okay, we've given the regulatory approval, uh, they have to roll it out. So even before knowing, people, so it'll be, it'll be somewhere in selected areas. I think GP practices are going to be very busy. Hospital will have to identify a place where they can start vaccinating. So once we get the approval, so fingers crossed, wait and see. So hopefully by uh, Christmas. Yes, that's, that's what we are hearing in the news. I'm not, uh, I don't have any inside information, <laughs> so, but it's what I read in the news. Ramali, can I book my ski, uh, ski holidays <laughs> in the Christmas time? Okay, will I get vaccine before that? I think next year. Next year? Yes. The safe, year. safe still uh, is, is safe to book next year. <laughs> Fingers so crossed. We are still in, yes. the, in the early phase yeah, of Yeah, because this so. is not a replacement yet. I think uh, it is a massive program to vaccinate, so starting from a high risk group. And anyone above 50 won't be unless they have uh, any comorbidities. The priority will be to start from 90 plus, 80 plus, 70 plus, yeah. and then they're uh, thinking about the care homes, isn't it? Yeah, they're care homes start definitely, first, care and homes, and frontline where or, they had more more deaths, yeah. isn't it? And 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 health staff, frontline health staff, workers, front so that group, and then uh, once it's, it's going to be massive. And the and other thing is, uh, even though these vaccines coming, they don't have the capacity to produce this huge amount of vaccine for the whole world. Exactly. So we are lucky. I'm hearing. Uh, 40 million, so been ordered because one person needs to have two doses. Two doses per yeah. person. So two weeks apart. Yeah. So again, where we were before and now, this is the best news one but could But even have. though we have vaccines, we don't know how long this immunity is going to yes, last. This is the because thing. we are still in the yeah. early, early trial phase. Something known as once a vaccine is released, the trial carries on something known as post-marketing surveillance. Post so they will have to keep an eye for years to see whether anything uh, which they didn't uh, get reported before, any other side effect, or how is the efficiency. So it will be followed on as like a trial for, for a few years, even after marketing. I'm just wondering, will it be like a polio vaccine? Like you had it and you're fine, you're safe. No, I don't think. You, you don't might have to take repeated doses. Might have to. We don't know because we don't know much about the uh, duration of the immunity. Because this uh, corona also a bit clever um, yes. virus and it keeps yeah. changing. Yes, although this is what we need to remember. We've had enough of corona, but corona will never have enough of us. We've had enough of corona. We had it, enough of But that. the virus will never get fed up with us. Well, it will keep attacking us. Exactly. Thing. But vaccine is not the end, isn't it? We still have to Yes. Be yes, careful. Yes. We have to maintain that social distancing mask yeah. until we know exactly how long it's going to work. And, and uh, the, 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 the high risk groups have to take precautions. Precautions. Yeah. Maybe it's not yet ready to organize parties. No, definitely not. Because this is going to be something we could set down and we can have a nice yes. Christmas, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. But. Uh, I think to learn more about this vaccine, how it works, yes. it will take some yeah, time. Yeah, and there'll be more information coming out. Yeah. Okay. Romali, I think we are coming to the end of the program. Do you want to say uh, any special message to our viewers? Yeah, so it's a summary of my, my, my last discussion. So we are very grateful and we are lucky we are having this vaccine released. We never thought it will be earlier, we were told next year. But still, don't forget the basic. Uh, uh, hygiene principles so make sure you keep uh, social distancing uh, personal hygiene and uh, hopefully we'll have a completely uh, uh, a new year to look forward to and and maybe even go on holidays let's hope so fingers crossed Thank you very much for being Pleasure. with the family. It's just a really nice program. It Thank was you. short, but uh, now uh, the lines will be open so you could call us if you have any more further questions. But for time being, 
Uh, we talked about vaccines and we, in the initial bit, we touched about the basic vaccines, what is vaccine and uh, the childhood vaccines. Then the second half, we mostly concentrate on the, uh, the good news is uh, the corona vaccine or the COVID-19 vaccine. So good news is going to be out soon. It's been out in uh, Russia and China for a while, but it's going to be out in the West as well. But anyway, um, until we see you in the next program, which is going to be uh, anesthesia next week. So um, that's again a subject not many people know, don't know much about it and they have lots of questions. Will I be awake during that operation? So anyway, to watch that, you have to be there next week at the same time uh, on Iron TV or on our YouTube channel. But for today, thank you for staying with us on Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram. If you have any further questions, please email us healthtalk at iontv.co.uk or message us on our dedicated YouTube channel Health Talk with Dr. Akram or Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. And we will respond as soon as we can. But for now, goodbye and keep yourself safe.